This spring, I took a five day getaway to explore Japan's Kyushu Island for the first time, where I went on a road trip around different parts of the island to experience all the various charms this island has to offer. I arrived in early spring towards the end of March, so all the cherry blossoms weren't fully bloomed in certain spots yet. Luckily, the lady at the coffee stand suggested we head over to Hokke Ginkak Garden to view the willowing cherry blossoms, which were in full bloom at the time. It was so whimsical to see up close and gave off a different feeling to the normal cherry blossoms. From there, it was a one hour drive to Yufuin, an enchanting onsen town in Oita Prefecture. I was so excited to have lunch at this yakiniku restaurant I've been looking forward to the most before my trip started. You can choose either the beef or chicken set, and it comes with a giant mushroom and other vegetables to grill. I'm usually not a big fan of mushrooms, but this one tasted amazing. The texture was almost meat like, without that strong mushroom scent that puts off many. Next, we began exploring the town. And undeniably, one of the most iconic sites of this town is Kirin Lake. Surrounded by mountains, be sure to stop by Cafe La Rouche for a scenic view over a nice cup of coffee. The town itself is fun to walk around. With small shops, cafes, and cherry blossoms along the way. And another place I definitely had to visit was the Shiba Cafe. Here you'll have to pay an entry fee of 1000 yen, where you'll get a free drink and 30 minutes to play with the cutest Mami Shiba. That evening, we checked in at Hoshino Resort, Kaiyu Fuin, for a night. And their kaiseki dinner, inspired by regional dishes and culinary methods, was so indulgent I couldn't stop eating. The rooms are quite modern and have a private open-air bath on the balcony that we can enjoy to our heart's content. The breakfast was an array of local ingredients and the highlight for me was definitely the miso soup with this thick flat udon-like noodle. Next was a compulsory coffee stop at Sankura Coffee, which looks out to a stunning view of Mount Yufu. From Yufuin, we then took a one-hour drive to Oguni, where we had lunch at Omiya, a riverside restaurant famous for their unagi-don. There is just something so satisfying about a simple bowl of unagi-don with pickles and soup. After lunch, we stopped by Kappa Waterfall for a short hike. You can walk along the main stream, where you'll eventually reach the main waterfall. But because it was quite slippery from the rain that day, I couldn't reach it. Oguni Ryo Shrine is one of Oguni's most famous shrines, apparently famous for boosting financial fortune. The temple is surrounded by towering cedar trees, giving off an enchanting feeling while you're there. There's also a place to wash and bless your coins for good luck. But the type of luck you wish for depends on the color of the string you choose to tie your coin with. One of the most stunning places of this trip was definitely Meoto Falls. Translating to male and female, the falls are made up of two adjacent waterfalls, which meet and blend to form one river, thus symbolizing love and making this place frequently visited by many couples. Next, we headed towards Aso. As we got closer, a viewpoint worth visiting is the Shiroyama Scenic Overlook, which gives you a panoramic view of Aso Valley. While you're there, be sure to stop by their shop and buy their fruits. Our home for the next two nights was Ryokang Minoa, a secluded and peaceful Ryokang with a small number of rooms. We picked our yukata and headed over to the main dining hall for dinner, which was another satisfying course of regional cuisine.
It was so healing to spend the rest of our evening here, followed by a morning soak in the onsen before breakfast. The weather looked amazing the next day, so we first headed to Ishingyo Sakura Tree. It wasn't fully bloomed then, but it would have looked so magical if we came at the right time. Next was Aso Milk Factory for some decadent desserts before heading over to Cafe Sakura for lunch. It's a charming restaurant in an old Japanese house overlooking the fields. The cafe serves set meals and pasta with coffee and desserts. I highly recommend ordering their sponge cake, which was so light and airy and paired perfectly with tea. Kamishikimi Kumanoimasu Shrine is tucked away in the cypress forests at the foot of Mount Aso. Although I've visited a lot of shrines in the past, to find one that blends in so seamlessly with nature was so enchanting to me. Take the path behind the main hall to a large sacred stone with a 10 meter hole right through it. Local myths say that this hole was made when a demon escaped from the rock, making this rock a symbol of achieving difficult goals. The next stop was Shirakawa Spring, known as one of the 100 best spring waters in Japan due to its quality, mild taste, and clarity. The water can be bottled back home and is perfect for brewing tea and is also made into sake. The spring itself also leads up to a peaceful shrine that's worth visiting. Being a tea lover, I had to stop by Minami Aso Tea House Honten to buy some gifts back home. A highlight of this place is tasting some of their tea blends while looking out at a stunning view. Back at the Ryokan, we had nabe for dinner that night, and the porridge we made out of the remaining stock was so good. The next day, I cut back on breakfast so that I could make the most out of my strawberry picking experience at Aso Health Farm. Here you pay 2,000 yen upon entry, where you can pick as many strawberries as you like. It honestly felt like a buffet and I couldn't stop eating. The highlight though was the tomatoes which had a hint of sweetness to them. We stopped for a short visit in Yame for tea. Arriving a little too early, we had some time to explore the town, where we stumbled upon Fukushima Hachiman Shrine. Established for the peace and prosperity of the Fukushima region, the shrine has been with residents for over 350 years since 1661. The cherry blossoms were absolutely stunning and the shrine had a friendly shiba guarding the place. This town was beautiful and I'm honestly so glad we had time to explore it by chance. Yabeya Konomi Honke is the oldest tea wholesaler in Kyushu. This shop was recommended to us by the owner of the tea house we planned on visiting, as she also sources her tea from here. And finally, the Maruyasabo Tea House was open. Here you have an option of having tea prepared for you, or preparing the tea yourself. The attention to detail in every step of the tea ceremony from start to finish was amazing to watch. I highly recommend those visiting Kyushu to give Yame some attention. Although it's a small town, it's rich in culture and crafts, and a place I'd love to spend a few more days at again. We headed towards Itoshima for the couple stones, a scenic spot with the iconic white tori gate and the rare couple rocks bound together by a sacred rope as a symbol of marriage. It is part of the Sakurai Shrine, located about a 5-10 to 10 minute drive away. This healing and tranquil shrine was established during the Edo period.
The cherry blossoms here are also so beautiful during this season, surprisingly at the car park. For dinner, we had izakaya at Musashiza, famous for its charcoal grilled seafood and yakitori. The ambience was lively and seeing everything being cooked in front of you made it even better. Be sure to make a reservation in advance to secure a seat. With the cherry blossoms at peak, we made it in time for the last night of illuminations at Maizuru Park. There's something extra magical about seeing these cherry blossoms lit up like this. There's also a Japanese garden next to it in Odori Park that we visited on the next day, with a tea house overlooking an expansive Zen garden. Every hour or so, the garden releases a sea of fog for an even more mesmerizing sight. Last but not least, we went back to the other side of Maizuru Park to view the cherry blossoms once more before we had to leave. The street food stalls that lined the paths made it all the more special. Visiting Kyushu Island for the first time definitely left a lasting impression on me. 